Hi, I'm Mike Coyle. I'm here with Mark Selby of RNC Minerals, listed on the TSX under RNX. Thanks for joining me today, Mark. Good to see you again, Mike. Excellent. So you've talked a lot about Beta Hunt and Dumont in the last little while. Yep. I'm sure you're getting tired of it, but uh, I wanted to touch base on Kikovic. Sure. This is not talked about very yep. often. So in this year's exploration program, what is the role of RNC and what are you looking to achieve this year? Yeah, so we, 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 have, we spun those exploration properties out um, a few years ago so they could raise their own capital without diluting our shareholders' exposure to Dumont and, and Beta Hunt, you know, which you know, we felt was the right thing to do at that time. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the great thing there is Kikovic, we found, you know, across a 45 kilometer strike length, you know, literally dozens of samples that yield 20, 30, 40 grams per ton, you know, at surface um, in an area that's never been explored before. So, um, you know, the, the, the exploration seasons up there are short, but in, in, in basically about, um, you know, 20 weeks worth of work, you know, we've, we've managed to make several, you know, in the ground gold discoveries and copper gold discoveries in different locations uh, on the property. This coming season, um, you know, we, we found we got some good intersections, um, relatively thick. They didn't have necessarily great uh, gold grades, but now, you know, again, we're starting to, you know, unlock the, the puzzle there. And so, you know, the plan is to do some more geophysics, identify some drill targets, you know, and then go forward there. The great thing is at Orford, uh, they just announced uh, two weeks ago that um, we Alamos Gold is coming as a 19.9% partner. Mm -hmm. um, and is intending, you know, to continue to support funding for that project going forward. So, you know, to get that kind of endorsement by a very successful mid-tier company, um, you know, is, is, a, is a great kudo, I think, to what the gold potential um, there is up there. And as well, there's a West Raglan property, which was the initial property that we uh, we acquired, um, which is, again, one of the few high-grade nickel, high-grade palladium um, stories um, that has, you know, you can actually put your foot on high-grade nickel or high-grade palladium today. Oh, wow. So it sounds like you, you kind of locked into a pretty valuable asset there with with Orford. Yeah, for sure. And we've got David Christie, uh, who's running it, who's, you know, last uh, last role as CEO was with the company that's now become, uh, the assets become Windfall Lake. So, you know, hopefully uh, he'll be uh, be able to repeat that success uh, <laughs> here again. Um, you know, and then, you know, our team provides uh, a lot of the, exp you know, on the ground exploration support um, and admin support for, for the company. So it's been my observation that you've had a pretty keen eye for finding value. I mean, where people turn their heads for a beta hunt, you kind of, um, you know, you drew towards that project and you wanted to pick it up and for good reason, obviously. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how you, you kind of retracted in some other projects uh, to maintain that asset and, and build on that. And some of the things that you've done to improve the uh, value for shareholders within your company. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, you know, the company was founded initially on Dumont, you know, and again, that was, you know, we knew Dumont wasn't going to happen in a year or two. You know, the nickel market had to soak up a lot of nickel from the nickel pig iron that was coming, you know, first from China and then later now from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the reality was, you know, because nickel prices got to $24 a pound or $50,000 a ton back in 2007, you know, most of the nickel pipeline basically all got funded and put into construction. And so, um, and because there was a number of nickel laterites that had been discovered, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s during another big nickel price spike, um, you know, there, there, had, there was a massive overhang effectively in terms of, you know, projects in that pipeline. So there really wasn't a lot of greenfield exploration and development going on. So we felt, you know, a way to create value was gonna take a long time, but was to be able to advance, you know, Dumont to the point where it is today, where it's fully permitted, uh, you know, feasible, well, put out the feasibility study update. Um, and so, you know, we're in a position now uh, to be able to, you know, the last step of finding a partner to help finance the project and take it through into construction and, and, and production. So, you know, that, that's sort of the long value path. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but then again, you know, with the other ones, you know, I think, you know, some ingredients you need to do is you have to look at lots of stuff. So, yep. you know, we made several deals, but that was because we probably looked at several dozen different assets mm -hmm. um, of various metals in various locations at various stages of development. Um, and again, there wasn't really the, ever the right, but, you know, sort of value fit. Uh, I think the other key piece to it is, 
you need to buy when everyone else is selling. So, you know, we did the beta hunt transaction and the VMS Ventures deal, which we acquired the 30% interest in the Reed mine mm -hmm. um, back in early 2016. So, you know, for people who don't remember, you know, that was the time where, you know, Glencore, Anglo American, all the big mining company stocks had collapsed. You know, the junior mid tier market had, you know, basically hit its cycle bottom at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's when we were able to take two and a half million dollars in cash and 20 million market cap and gain exposure to two production assets. Uh, you know, the Reed mine, you know, worked out, you know, very, very well. You know, it was a great operator, Hud Bay, running the asset. Um, it took very little of our attention to it um, because they were the operator. And so as soon as copper prices came back, you know, that asset was able to pay down its debt and generated a substantial amount of you know, cash flow. You know, our calculations are well over 100% IRR on our initial you know, five and a half million dollars in that of paper, you know, that we issued to acquire that asset at the time. You know, again, everyone knows with Beta Hunt that we struggled, you know, for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but we were able to use the cash from Reed, um, you know, use you basically, you know, take some of the value that was there at Dumont, you know, and be able to keep Beta Hunt going until we made the Father's Day, you know, Father's Day vein discovery. And again, you know, we've now with today's market cap, you know, we've you know earned a multiple in terms of the money that's been invested in, in Beta Hunt to, to date. You know, and and now going forward, you know, the key thing is, you know, you always need to do. You know, again, I think, you know, in sense of A, look at lots of opportunities, B, B, buy at the right time. C, I think you need to be open to, you know, a range of structures that make sense. You know, if I wanted to own 100% of every asset, you know, um, I wouldn't have been able to get a bunch of deals done. So, you know, you need to be, you know, to be flexible in terms of how you structure a deal. You know, if you look at the oil and gas sector, there's lots of companies that earn the return, you know, good returns on equity um, yep. for investors. You know, one of the things in the mining industry, you know, we don't. Um, but, you know, one, th one thing you see, you know, very common in the oil and gas industry is much more joint ventures where, you know, companies own 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% of an asset and don't feel they need to own 100% of everything. You know, and again, that just gives you more chips to play with if you don't have to put 100% of the capital, you know, into, into one particular asset. You know, so today you're quite happy with, you know, you started with Orford. You know, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, those are great, you know, that we have great optionality on two, two areas that might become home run expiration um, entities, the gold and gold copper at Kikovic, and then the, the nickel and palladium at, um, at West Raglan. Uh, you know, beta hunt today, we, you know, we're dwelling to, to unlock more value there, you know, and then with Dumont, with this feasibility study, you know, we think we've got the best uh, nickel cobalt development asset in the world. And let's not forget you are in the works of getting or acquiring the mill with the Higginsville land package as well. Yeah. So that and, looks good too. Yeah. And again, that, that totally de-risks the asset there. Uh, and again, it was great. You know, we did a deal with West Gold that didn't work out mm -hmm. um, two years ago, but that established the relationship that allowed us to get this deal done, you know, done, done pretty quickly. And I think on good terms for both, both groups. So we touched base on Dumont a little bit there uh, and buying some time for the nickel, nickel market to turn uh, mm -hmm. around for you. So what have you done differently with this feasibility study versus um, what you did back in 2016 to unlock some value for yourself? Yeah, the, the key, the key piece and the key reason for the update is, you know, in terms of the project itself, it was very robust. We actually took it out in 2015 to to, to come up with a fixed price turnkey quote with a Senko and Dural Figuera, and they did come back at that time to say that they could build build it for the feasibility study price, which is, you know, which is I think good, good kudos to our team and and mm -hmm. to those companies to you know they were willing to step up and do it at that point in time, you know. But the reality was the Canadian dollar is no longer 95 cents. And, you know, the oil prices aren't 90 dollars a barrel. You know, and Nickel prices weren't where they are um, at that point in time. So we basically updated the macro price deck. Mm -hmm. uh, the second other key piece of it, um, you know, that we took a look at was um, to add our sort of roasting approach to market. So we're producing a concentrate. The project's still about producing a concentrate. Mm -hmm. You know, but we'll joint venture with other companies to provide the roasting capacity. You know, that we need to, to get our product to market. Uh, you know, we. We work with Qingshan, who's now the world's leading nickel company and the world's largest stainless steel company. Um, and they built uh, one roaster in 2014. They built a second roaster in 2017. So you know, there's you know market proofs that this this path to market does work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't have built the uh, the yeah. second one. Uh, and again, we're quite familiar. Um, you know, with with the area and and, and uh, you know, from our time at Inco, we did lots of joint ventures in China, you know, going all the way back to 1996. Yeah. So this is something you know we think is you know a very doable uh, path forward, and unlocks a massive amount of value for Dumont. With the change in the macro and the change in the in the path to market, 
we just we you know we we uh, we updated the mine plan, um, and we're also updating our tailings storage. You know, again, tailings has been a big issue. Uh, again, our tailings was fully permitted. You know, um, we used best in class uh, approach at that time. You know, but there's some other ways to deposit the material that you know basically has less water stored at height, which yeah. is fundamentally what causes the problem. So you know, we think we've got a much more robust tailings plan, and the thing with the mine plan we designed. You know, we were able to get the to have, just have uh, we had four four exits in, in our prior design. You know we've reduced yep. those down, and now that allows us to use uh, trolley assist, which basically is like putting streetcar lines, um, yep. um, you know, on the main ramp, which allows trucks to go up much faster um, than they otherwise would. So it it, redu it reduces you know the size of your mine fleet um, and reduces your mining cost. And and in, in a place like Quebec, where you have access to very low cost power. It's a tremendous thing to be able to take advantage of. So how do you manage two projects? I mean, you've got Beta Hunt, who's going full bore with yep. Higginsville. You've got the mill now. Um, and then you've got this Dumont project that, by all accounts, feasibility study has come back and things are looking promising for you. Yep. How do you go about managing these? Or do we see a spin out in the future or what's your thought process? Yep. No, that's a very good question. No, again, you know, I think, you know, for us, we all come out of large big mid-tier and mid-tier companies. And so we're used to running multi-asset companies. So again, it's just having the right people to write, run the right assets. Um, but from an investor perspective, you know, you, again, you always need to look at, you know, the assets you have and does it make sense to own those two assets within one entity? So, mm -hmm. you know, gold bugs like gold assets. Um, and, and now with the EV story, getting you know, electric vehicles, getting so much investor attention, um, you know, you're going to see more and more funds who want pure play you know, electric vehicle exposure. And there's very few ways to get that on the TSX today. Yeah. So you know, I think, again, you know, I own a lot of stock personally. Most of my net worth is in the stock of this company. And so you know, we'll do whatever makes sense for shareholders. And if it makes sense to spin them into two different companies, we'll do that at the right time. Excellent. So. Back in October, I bugged you guys and asked you guys about the ASX listing. Yeah. And, you know, it's been a, a process. I know you've been doing a lot of other things in the meantime. Yeah. Is this something you're still exploring? And if you are, can you kind of explain to shareholders some sure. of the challenges that come with listing on another exchange? Yeah. No, that's a very good question. No, no, it's it's still a very much active discussion for us. Um, we basically had to put a halt to it when we did the Higginsville transaction. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that when you, when you list on the ASX, uh, again, there's not a huge number of requirements if you're already publicly listed, but there are some boxes that you need to tick um, to be able to, to list list on the ASX. And one of them is, is to get an independent engineer's report, the specific type, uh, type of technical report on each of your key assets. So okay. once we're acquiring, um, Higginsville, which is going to become a key asset, yeah. you, we we couldn't sort of we couldn't move forward on that until the, the Higginsville acquisition. You know, way we decided we were going to do it, and B, it was complete. So we'll basically pick up where we left off um, once the Higginsville deal to deal is complete. You know, and then again, if it makes sense to do in the market, you know, we would love to do it sometime probably by the fourth quarter of next year. Excellent. So while we're on the Higginsville topic, yeah. we'll just carry on with sure. that. Sure. Um, with Higginsville set to close in a couple within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, can we expect mining to be ramped up to full capacity at that point? And what synergies will you see between West Gold being a large shareholder? Yeah. Um, what will be their involvement aside from just being a large shareholder with the projects? Yeah. So you know, Peter Cook is is the, is the main guy behind West Gold. Is again, you know, we're able to. Um, um, establish a relationship through the, the first transaction that we tried to do with the South Cal Corley business. Mm -hmm. um, he's got good relationships with another key members of our team, you know, and that's a person, you know, who, who understands the goal fields, who, you know, basically worked them for many, many decades. And again, so, you know, he's able to provide insight and in, in, in relationships that we may not have as one of the new kids on the block, mm -hmm. um, you know, be able to bring to bear. So, you know, um, he was very supportive through the prior process. He's been very supportive through the process to date, and I expect him to be a very supportive, you know, and long-term shareholder. Older, um, there he worked his first day in the mining industry was a beta hunt you told um, me about yeah this. so this is something he said yeah. publicly in meetings that I've been in so you know he's he's actually held some of that specimen gold from around the nickel lenses yeah. um, back in the day so you know he's he's always you know known what the potential uh, for this asset you know could be so with Higginsville um, you had mentioned in a prior interview, I believe, that it can handle more ore. Yeah. Is there something, um, do you have any plans to actually uh, upgrade the mill to increase the capacity? 
Yeah, so the current mill capacity as is, we're gonna leave for now. You know, we're gonna focus on filling the capacity as is, you know, that's well over 3,000 tons a day. So, you know, we'll be looking to, you know, get 50 to two thirds of that, you know, from Beta Hunt at least. Uh -huh. um, and then we'll probably, the remaining third will come from, from the Baloo pit. Um, and then other third party or, um, you know, that we're able to, to uh, to come and we've already been approached by groups you know who are looking for tolling capacity in the area so again <laughs> reinforces yeah <laughs> reinforces the option value you know yeah. of 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 that land package i think one thing i've been pointing out to people you know if you go back and look at some of the prior quarters and costs and so forth for higginsville you know you're going to see some relatively high all, all in sustaining costs mm -hmm. you know and the reason is is the primary you know without doing a deal with us the primary feed for that mill was coming from the mount henry mine which is located about 85 kilometers away it was a lower grade open pit it had very hard ore um, which mm -hmm. takes a lot of energy to crush and there's a lot of wear and tear on the plant um, and as well um, just that because uh, there was some refractory gold in that it you didn't get you know particularly good recoveries the nice thing you know as we're taking over this asset um, the mine feed is scheduled to switch over to the recent uh, open pits that they picked up from s2 resources so blue uh, and so you know that is more sort of typical west australian um, feed for that kind of a mill so it's soft um, it's it's good grade and it's only 10 to 15 kilometers away from the uh, from the mill today. So it sure beats the 85 that the other one was, right? Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about production at Beta Hunt. You yep. recently told us that you were getting back underneath the Father's Day vein. Yep. You said you're going to probably hit that by May. Yep. Everybody wants to know where yep. you're at with this. And as a secondary part to that question, are you going to be reporting when you hit these pockets of high grade or are you just going to bury these in your production numbers uh, at the end of it every quarter? Yeah, I know what it'll come down to is we're required to disclose material information, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if if what we find is material, you know, we'll disclose it. What so if we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see at the time. So, okay. you know, I think 50 ounces isn't material. Yeah. You know, if we hit 5,000 ounces, you know, that would definitely be material. So I'm talking my language now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll see when we get there. Okay, so uh, a few other targets you've had. You've had sure. uh, 7,621 grams per ton, and yep. you were 45 meters away from that uh, when you first announced that. Yep. Have you made any progress towards that uh, that drill hit? No, right now, so so again, the focus has really been on, on getting the drilling done to get the resource estimate done, and you know that process is now well underway. You know, again, once we were sort of over the hump of the drilling, that's when we turned the mine production back on. Um, which we talked about, you know, sort of at the end of March and it sort of got up towards a 40,000 ounce, you know, annualized run rate. Mm -hmm. um, we're driving back in underneath the Father's Day vein because that's now in the mine sequence, you know, where we're able to go. And so um, you know, we're still, you know, we're still heading towards there, um, you know, and, you know, fingers crossed, we'll see, you know, what it is when we get there. You know, again, it's there. You've got a 1,400 gram per ton hit seven meters oh. down, you know, and so, you know, we'll see what it is when we get there. Um, in terms of that particular hit, it's only 45 meters away from some existing development, but to, to be able to get to it quickly, you'd have to, um, you know, force production activities to kind of shut yeah. down in that particular area. So uh, again, rather than charge off after a certain certain hit, we know it's we know exactly where it is, yeah. um, and so as we develop out you know towards it then we can come off it and it's only seven or eight meters away off what the you know planned development drive is going to be so you know we'll be there by this you know through the second half of the year i don't know again where we'll you know depending on what the, the updated mine plan looks like that'll come out in q3 that'll determine how soon or how how later in, in the second half of the year that we'll get there but you know Again, the goal is not going to disappear anytime soon. So. No, it's yeah. there. It's yeah. on the ground. So uh, with regards to production, um, do you have a, an estimation of best case, worst case scenario of what your numbers might look like towards the end of the year? And this is totally forward thinking, sure. but yeah. I need to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's really tricky without the technical, you know, without it sort of talking to a technical report. You know, as I said, right now, we've turned the mine back on towards, a, you know, at a 40,000 ounce annualized run rate, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think from there, whether we get to 60, 80, a hundred thousand ounces is really going to come down to you know how the you know where the uh, updated mine plan 
you know, comes out, you know, and how much capital will be required to sort of get to those, you know, get to those, you know, particular particular run rates. And again, that excludes any high grade, right? So any Absolutely. high grade will be a bonus on top of that. Yeah. So uh, there's been a lot of chatter about the exploration stuff. Yep. And while I was at the mine, I had the opportunity to sit down with Steve Devlin and he yep. kind of explained where and what they were doing. Um, in an update or uh, verbally right now, yeah. can you kind of explain to people what it is that you're actually targeting? Are you sure. going straight down? Are you going to try to cut through four shears? Um, you know, wh right. what's your ultimate targets here? Yeah, the, the key thing here is, is again, you know, the, the, the initial focus was really on building out the resource and upgrading mm -hmm. the resource that's there. So now that that's done, we're going to take that final 5,000 meters and really, you know, t demonstrate to people sort of what the size potential of this asset could be. You know, the reality is, you know, we believe we've got four, you know, four distinct shears. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got drill intersections from the historic nickel drilling that have highlighted the tops of those shears and that, you know, overall strike length of those is over four kilometers. You know, the reality is, is, you know, we've focused most of our drill drilling in one, just one stretch of western flanks and yeah. just in one stretch of, of the A zone. And, you know, we're still, you know, not, you know, very few drill holes below 150 meters below the contact. Yeah. So we're, you know, in terms of the overall potential of the property, you know, we've been operating and probably drilling in less than 10% of it. Mm -hmm. So now what we want to do is step out to some of the other shears. You know, we want to show the depth potential on some of the existing shears, um, you know, because they're, they're open in every direction. You know, we mm -hmm. haven't closed anything off yet at this point in time. So, you know, that's, that's the set of drill holes that are going to start, start shortly. Um, and you know, as 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 they they move forward, we'll be releasing those results, you know, through June and into July. I think we're we're all pretty excited about uh, seeing what those can produce here for this mine. Oh, I'm very excited too. So, <laughs> you know, first case we get the resource done, but once the yep. resource is done, you know, then you know to be basically take you know basically take it out for a drive just to see how you know how big this thing can yep. be, right? Absolutely. So that's really what this last five thousand meters is all about. So there's been six hundred and seventy five kilometers, roughly, of dr historic drilling yep. that's been done. And if you look at your presentation, there's actually a, a side shot that shows some interesting areas where the shears carry through the Luna Basalt and into some yep. other areas that are above where you're currently mining yep. right now. Now, Steve had mentioned that they did, that you do have the option of going back over historical drill cores yep. and reassaying them. Yeah. So. Is this something that you're going to look at doing in the near future, or is this something that you're going to put off and continue on with exploration drilling beyond the forty thousand meters? No, that you actually bring up sort of two things. One is, mm -hmm. you know, a in terms of the logging historic drill core, that's something we're going to do. That's basically free drilling. You know, yep. that the core has been drilled. It's sitting out. You've driven by that massive core farm. Yep. You know, that hosts all the old WMC core. Um, it's just a matter of locating that core there. You know, cutting it and then sending that the material off for assays. So, you know. Again, now that we've again got a better understanding of what's there and have some cash to be able to do what we need to do, you know, a, a core sampling post, you know, process will will begin and, and will you know continue you know for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. um, as we you know target certain areas after this exploration program in terms of where the next you know highest probability areas are that we should go. Um, you know, the second thing you, that you talk to is the fact that yeah, you know, I when we talk about just the four shears, that's just from the contact with the Ultra Mafic down. Mm -hmm. You know, those open pits that sit above the property, you know, those are on structures that carried all the way to the surface. Yep. And those structures continue above the contact on our property boundary. You know, so yep. again, that's a whole other area of exploration that we really don't even talk about today. Um, and again, this supported uh, multiple open pit mines for multiple years. So, I, you know, again, if I can't, you know, there's lots and lots of gold at beta on. That's why I'm trying to squeeze it out yeah. of you because it's not often <laughs> talked about. Yeah. Um, so let's get back to the course for a second here because yeah. it's really interesting. You're going to go back and you're going to reassay cores that were done years and years ago. Yeah. So you're doing these assays on these new cores, but we're only hearing about gold. Are you finding nickel in these and are you actually assaying them for nickel as well, just to see what the potential is at depth for, for nickel deposits? Yeah, we haven't, we've been primarily fo focused on the gold. You know, there are some theories that there might be some nickel down there. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see what happens. The nice thing with nickel, it tends to show up pretty clearly um, yeah. in the core relative to the gold. So, um, you know, we, you know, we'll, we'll do that. But again, as, as we reassay the core, they did assay, you know, 
primarily for nickel, and that's where there were times that they weren't interested in gold at all. So, mm -hmm. you know, unless there was a screaming intersection that was there, they, you know, it was an extra cost to do it, you know, and we went through some pretty tight times in the mining industries back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s. So, you know, a lot of time Western mining, you know, assayed only what they needed to around the nickel and left the rest of the core, even though you might have had 10 or 15 meters of really good looking gold core, you know, which was an additional cost relative to what they were doing in the nickel side. So you're very focused on the nickel at yeah. the time. Okay, so do you have um, any estimates or what you would like to see from a resource update with your current drilling program? Yeah, again, I think, you know, we'll see, you know, where, where it comes out to, but, you know, we've, you've been able to see from the drilling that we've been able to extend it, you know, a couple hundred meters to the north, you know, mm -hmm. we've extended, you know, below, um, you know, a number of areas. So, you know, I think we'll see a pretty healthy increase in terms of the total resource, you know, and then we should, we should see a big shift from inferred into indicated um, or better, um, you know, in that update that will, you know, those will start coming out at the end of the second quarter. And that update, that's going to include your 5,000 uh, meters of exploration drilling or simply the 35? Of yeah, the 35,000 will feed the resource update. The 5,000 will be step outs that, you know, won't actually factor in into any resource okay. calculation. It's just to show structurally, you know, that the gold, these gold structures continue for, you know, quite a distance, you know, beyond where the current resource sits. They're just there to push people's imagination. Exactly. Into the unknown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's the status of the specimens, Mark? Everybody wants to know. Me particularly. Uh, okay. Yeah. I want to know where the bootleg is and right. I want to know what the heck you're doing with it because nobody's seen it. Nobody's yeah. heard nothing about okay. it. Okay. So What's going on? Yeah, so we had there was there was a the largest gem and mineral show in China um, mm -hmm. was in in May. Um, so we took the specimen, some of the specimens to that show in China. Um, there was also we were invited by the Northern Miner to have uh, present um, at. Uh, they had a special reception before their symposium in London. Um, so we had another block of uh, specimens there. You know, they highlighted us as one of the top stories uh, yeah. of 2018. So got to tell the story of, you know, how everything evolved there. Um, so, you know, that, that's basically the, the end of, of the shows mm -hmm. now for the specimens. And we were working with a couple people to start to that sales process. So, you know, the, 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 the golden rose or butt has been, has been sold to a collector. Um, and so, you know, and, and, you know, we've sold several smaller pieces and we're going to be ramping up that those sales activities, you know, over the coming weeks here. I so. was really hoping that was going to be the one that you held on to. That's a really nice specimen. Yeah. No, no, I would, I would have liked to hold on to it too, but <laughs> it's, it's money. So <laughs> truth be you told, know, I just yeah. wanted the opportunity to go and photograph it before you got right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. So we've got past the specimens. You've covered a lot of things for us. So, um, looking back, is there anything you might have done a little bit differently after you found the Father's Day vein, um, you know, instead of touring around with the stones for as long as you did or, or, or whatnot? Oh, yeah. No, no. I think, you know, I wouldn't have changed, you know, anything there. You know, again, when you, um, you know, we were, we've never been invited to the BMO con mining conference before, which is, you know, one of the world's biggest mining mining conferences and so you get ex uh, exposed to a much wider range of investors and exposed to you know a range of corporates so mm -hmm. you know when we were the center when we were the centerpiece of the Korshak exhibit mm -hmm. you know and you have you know the former CEO whose name I won't mention <laughs> of, of one of the largest mining companies in the world basically crouched down behind one of your nuggets doing a selfie um, <laughs> on that rock or you have you have a number of very large and mid-tier gold companies who you know I basically got to talk for 15 20 25 30 minutes you know with the CEO of that company about the deposit and so forth, you know, to get that kind of access to that many people, companies and investors, uh -huh. you know, is, is, you know, is, is, a you know, um, is, is very difficult to get and doesn't, you know, can, you know, you, you you know, whatever price you, you want to pay, sometimes can't even get access. So, yeah. you know, having those rocks for six months opened a, you know, huge amount of doors, you know, and the cost was just the financing cost of not selling them when we did. All right. Well, thanks, Mark, for uh, taking the time to meet with us today. I really appreciate it. It's uh, been an interview that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Oh, no. Thank you, Mike. Cheers. Thanks for taking the time.